he'll tear your soul apart. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, the Hellraiser Ultimate Pinhead. Yearning to surpass the earthly limits of pleasure and pain, Frank purchases a mysterious puzzle and inadvertently opens a portal to hell when he solves it. His body is torn to pieces by the Cenobite residents of the other realm, but something of Frank lingers, waiting on the blood of others to return to life. Ultimate Pinhead includes three weapons, two swappable heads, and two different versions of the Lament configuration. This was definitely a line that I had so hoped that NECA Toys would revisit. In fact, you could say I would have given my soul to have Pinhead be resurrected in an ultimate form. I think under the context of what we're reviewing exactly, I probably should tread lightly with uttering the words, I would give my soul. Nonetheless, I feel worrisome. Nonetheless, though, according to the tape measure, the ultimate version of Pinhead stands 7.4 inches in height. And then in centimeters, works out to be 18.8, .8, a little over 18 and a half centimeters tall. Yes, I took such sweet pleasure collecting the entire line. I think there were three waves of Hellraiser figures that NECA Toys had churned out many, many years ago. In fact, if you guys want to go back and have a look at every single figure that I've reviewed for Series 1, Series 2, and Series 3, you can check them out on this channel. I probably will likely go back and revisit a few of them, just as it certainly feels a good time, if any, to go back and revisit some of the Hellraiser figures. But just to kind of put things in perspective, who are these small little figures on either side of Ultimate Pinhead? Well, these so happen to be the other Pinhead figures that we have gotten from NECA Toys. I will get more extensively looking and comparing the the older ones to the newer one when of course we get more into knee deep into this review but i did definitely want to show you guys what the older figures look like on either side to the very pristine and new pinhead that happens to be in the center of it and we also don't know how further into hell NECA will travel to give us new hellraiser figures so in the meantime we'll bring in another figure one of the other cenobites so that you can see the comparison between the two pinhead yeah is a lot taller than the older cenobites and older pinhead figures that we had gotten before fingers crossed we certainly do get ourselves some additional cenobites after all Pinhead would feel a little absent without a few of his minions sort of being around him. But this is what Butterball, the original Butterball figure, looked like next to the new Ultimate Pinhead. So having a look at the accessories that come included with Ultimate Pinhead, the first one we'll have a look at. And of course, ironically enough, the best place to start these reviews would be the starting point of all the problems that starts in these films. And that's the Lament Configuration Puzzle Box. Everybody thinks that they can find pleasure or pain in some cases, ends up finding a doorway to hell and certainly finds this guy on the other side of it. The puzzle box, as you can see, is very rather quite small. Um, one thing I noticed about this box is while some of the printing lines up, there's a few little places here where the printing sort of feels shifted off to the side, like it's not quite dead center. My personal favorite of all the Hellraiser films, personally, is the Bloodlines, or Hellraiser 4, telling of the merchant family bloodline and, of course, the original puzzle creator. The interesting thing about this puzzle box is I'll bring in one of the other ones that we had gotten from the earlier waves. And this one does feel and look much rounded to this one from the newest release. You can certainly argue the point that when it comes to... Let me just get the correct side. There's... There's the, yeah, there's the side right there. We'll just line up the two. Um, interesting thing is, of course, when you compare the two in the film, it's more box-like, obviously, with more sharp cornered edges, whereas the original release here was more of a rounder box and simply just had stickers applied over top of it. The newer box is definitely a, an upgrade step up, though, again, it's a bit disappointing that the print, it's not on all the sides, mind you. I think it's one of these sides here. Yeah, it's this one right here. It's slightly more shifted to the side. Whereas this one here doesn't have that problem, but this one feels a little bit more realistic. It certainly looks more realistic to the one in the film. The other thing he comes included with, of course, if you're gonna get one puzzle box configuration, why not get the star-shaped configuration as well? 
The only thing absent from this is the first stage configuration where the box slide slides up and then of course shifts across. Nonetheless though, we do get ourselves the star configuration and I'll bring in the other one that we had gotten before. It's interesting that the original one feels like it's a little bit more detailed. It's certainly a lot larger in size. In this case, I might actually give points to the original star-shaped configuration box for just looking a little bit more detailed than this one right here. Proportionately, it obviously wouldn't fit to the same scale as, well, let's just put that one down for a second so you guys can see. Let's grab the other configuration, the other puzzle box. It's a lot bigger, so you couldn't imagine that the same shape could have come from this shape here. But I feel like this one might be a little bit of a better looking sculpt, my own personal opinion at least. Again, you can see the star shape on the one side. It's been printed on. This one actually looks like it's been more sculpted in place instead. And there's the two differencing, uh, two different star configurations right there. The other thing that comes included with the figure, of course, he's going to have some tools of the trade. And Pinhead comes with a whole bunch of instruments of carving and producing pleasure and pain. Again, depending on what your preference may be. He comes with a smaller sort of bone saw. As you can see, it's been laced and covered in blood, old or new. It's hard to really determine that. And each one of these tools come with actually like a little hook. I'll show you how that works in a second. They're small and brittle in plastic. It's not something you're going to be wanting him to necessarily hold in hand. But uh, again, it's going to serve a purpose when we look at his belt or that little loop of string attached to his belt. He also comes included with more of a hooked weapon or hooked tool. A surgical tool, if you will. And you can see as well, that's been covered in blood. More dried again, blood. Again, it's really hard to say. And last but certainly not least, he has this little, little tiny, I almost dropped it for a second, this little tiny little knife here. Now again, all of these, you can either put it in his hand, as he's got one hand for sort of suitable for holding the smaller tools but you got to be really careful with these as they are small and very thin of plastic I think when it's all said and done I'm more likely to probably display it where probably most people would be likely displaying these and that's going to be attaching it to these two strings you can see they're on either side of his open tummy you just sort of loop them in place to do this, I'm not necessarily following the protocols of the film and the placement of where these appear in the film, but it's just for the time being to show you guys where these go. Sort of just loop them in place, just like that, and dangle them over. As you can see, it's not quite the widest of opening for loop, but one good thing about it is when you eventually get them hooked on, they're le less likely to fall off. Uh, it seems like they're not going to be going anywhere now. We'll put the figure down just for a second. I know, I know, you guys are anxious to see it. And we'll have a look at also the hands that he comes included with. Of course, some box holding hands would be crucial for, of course, Pinhead. Likely, and probably most people are likely to display him with holding the box in his hands. And then he's also got a pair of, like, sort of gripping hands. So defer, again, holding any one of those little tools that we just recently had a look at. The hands are perfect and paired exactly the way that they appear in the film with that slight little bit of blood on the fingertips and the thumbs and, and the... Uh, little pinky finger are covered as part of the gloves, whereas the middle three fingers are ex completely exposed. You can see the reflective nature of the paint that they apply to the gloves really does make it give it that sort of pleather-like plastic, almost like leather material that he has for his suits, as well as all the other Cenobites. And last but certainly not least, what pinhead would be complete? I mean, it's a pretty complete pinhead anyways. What complete pinhead would there be without an alternate, more anguished head portrait? I really like this one quite a bit. I think I'm probably going to be likely displaying... Oh, I don't know. See, that's a, it's a tough one now, the more I think about it, which one I'd actually display him with. Just to show you, here his defaulted head. And again, here is the one with the exposed visible teeth. Yeah, I know what, I know what you mean. It is a really tough call to make as to which one you'd prefer instead. I must say, one thing I have to commend NECA toys for, obviously if you've collected NECA's Hellraiser figures in the past and you know sort of the difficulty of turning Pinhead's head simply because the pins are something that could easily get squished, crushed, or bent in some way. I was really worried with how you could go about changing the head 
Was it going to be on a very large ball joint? Was it even going to be on one of those normal cylinder posts that NECA are using for their newest figures? Not even that. If I just take his head, just wiggle it off like that, it's got one of the most thinnest pegs, and certainly one that works best for a figure like Pinhead, because it couldn't be any bit easier to change out the head. You still want to be careful, of course. You don't want to apply too much pressure to the pins on either side. It's not something you, of course, want to crush his pins as a result of it. But you sort of just wiggle this back into place, just like that, and pop it down. And there you've got the other head. Man, that makes things a whole lot easier. Nick, I really certainly did think this out when it came to how collectors were going to swap out the head. I honestly will admit, I was a little worried the idea that it was going to be a larger ball joint. I was really going to have to fight pulling it off, but it couldn't have been any bit easier than that. Just in case you guys also wanted to see, I wanted to bring in one of the er earlier pinheads so you could sort of see an apples to apples sort of comparison between the two and how they have, I feel, greatly improved their figures. This one does have a bit the charm to it, the older figure that is, in the sense that you really do see the defining lines, those little carvings into the side, atop the sides of his cheek, basically all the areas in which the pins have been installed. You get a little bit more of the anguish that's been cut into this plastic, whereas the more chalkier white on the newest release doesn't seem to have as much contrast of colors. It's basically more of a really pale white. You can see side to side how vastly different one is to the other. It clearly isn't the exact same head portrait at all. It's a brand new head sculpt. It's a brand new series of pins. And it's a whole lot easier, if you ask me, to, in, to replace the head if need be. Simply just, again, popping that off that very sil small cylinder post and sliding the new one in place. We'll just quickly kind of do a quick look top to bottom at how the old stacks up with the new. A much broader chest, much more realized, and I feel sculpted better on the newer release, with the biggest, biggest change really being the introdu introduction of the fabric cloth, which obviously the older ones resorted to a sculpt, which worked perfectly fine at the time that these were released. And a result of a trade-off for that is the fact that obviously you can see sort of just sculpted in feet, tucking underneath the sculpting of basically what is just a pegged figure. Ironically enough, I still I might have even commented this at the time that I first did this video, but you can sort of feel like there's legs or something going on on the inside. Nonetheless, though, a vast upgrade, if you ask me, by switching from plastic sculpted cloth, which, again, looked fine for what at the time it was released, to like the new fabric cloth. Sort of this microfiber as well. It's got a neat reflection surface to it. You can see that it's very small little almost honeycomb style of patterning that they've put into the fabric. And again, with this whole bottom section being wire framed, you can manipulate it and move it any which way that you want. When I did get it out of the packaging, it's still sort of slightly bent. Nothing that I can't certainly fix by just straightening that out. Here's kind of what it looks like on the back side of Pinhead. It's not something you normally would see on Pinhead. It's not his best side, so to speak. So you sort of can just bring the cloth, the, there we go the skirt just around that and completely conceal it. Obviously, you're not going to be displaying your figure from the back anyways. So again, it's just a close-up look at the details on the new What a neat looking figure. I honestly never thought I'd ever see the day that we would get ourselves new Hellraiser figures. I sort of thought it was going to be one of those one and done sort of licenses that a company would never be able to acquire. Certainly not NECA would be able to acquire again, and yet the proof is in the pudding. What a fantastic new upgrade. You can see the hooks now embedded their way into the back of the flesh of Pinhead there. Little back section of his collar there. Just a really neat looking detailed figure. And again, using this reflective shinier paint, you really get more the sense of the type of material that he had in this figure, in this film. Really tight leather, constricting almost, I would imagine, the girdle that he had to wear. The exposed sections with the peeled away flesh pinned down. And of course the section right here, the kind of awkward looking bunched pin section of his belly button area. Ooh, just gruesome, even just to like look at the front of him. You can imagine, again, just how uncomfortable that costume would have actually likely been. Some neat detailing done to the top torso section, which is a slight different shade. 
you notice that it's more a little more, more of a purple tint to the coloring of the more black sleeves and the lower black sections here. Interestingly enough though, you can see there's like little streams of blood that continue to trickle their way down. It's a really nice touch that they would actually include those little areas, little rivers of red running all the way down. Of course, then again, you've got yourself the fabric skirt. I love the fact that they're doing that with fabric instead of plastic. It certainly does make things a lot easier for moving the figure. You're not going to be going for wide jogs with pinhead, but it certainly is nice to be able to move the figure around and not have the worry, the, the really the restrictions that came along with having this just all being molded plastic. Of course, one thing you did notice is that you don't want to get too careless with moving the figure's legs because the legs... Basically, because the tools are hanging so low down on his leg, obviously, if you're moving the legs too frantically, you do run the risk of popping those off, the little looplets, the little hooks that they've got currently situated on top of the string. Again, we can just kind of move the skirt out of the way. We get treated to purple shin guards. Again, that's not something you would have seen. I'm wondering if they initially had taken this from earlier concept designs, drawings that perhaps Clive Barker supplied them, or simply NECA toys just took some creative luxuries. After all, that's going to be a section of, of the figure and the character that you're really not going to see anyways. I wonder if they just outright decided we're going to make him very decorative underneath that. As you can see, the detailing done to his knee guards, the sections of his thigh. It all kind of looks like real muscle tissue, doesn't it? Just exquisite detail done on that on those shin guards. And to think that they were purple. Again, I feel like it might be some creative luxuries done maybe on the part of the sculptors of NECA toys. Just again, a really neat looking figure. Let's talk his posability now. His head rotates back and forth. It doesn't seem as limited as you might think it might be. Because this whole back collar sticks up the way it is, but it's a, at least a softer plastic that you can still move like the head up. You can still move the head down. You still have the issues that come with these little tiny pins, of course. If you're putting your fingers against it, you want to be very careful. One good thing is by the design of simply of the character himself, if you grab on the sides of his ears, which are blue tinted like they are in the film and blue around the eyes, love that. But if you put your fingers on either side of it, it sort of helps to aid move the head up and down and rotate it back and forth without running the risk of pushing down too many of the pins. I will say, though, the pins themselves seem thicker. They're obviously quite visibly more thicker than the original release pinhead. So you sort of don't have, I feel, as much the risk of coming up with pulling this figure out of the bag, for example, and having all these things mushed down, all those individual uh, pins all flat against his face. The pins on, th on this guy are much thicker. So hopefully you can see right there. Ugh. What a neat looking sculpt. Just again, how those are all embedded into his skin. Some are a little bit more visible, like those carved in sections. A little bit more, some of them are a little bit more subtle. I said he was basically mostly all white. There are some areas you have to give credit for that have a little bit of that additional kind of rusted red kind of in between those areas. Anyways. Got so sidetracked talking about that. Let's go back to his articulation. So he basically has now torso articulation. Obviously the older figures didn't have that and possess that. His arms hinge outward and sort of this is one limitation that the figure does possess. Because his torso, his shoulder is sculpted the way that it is and his torso runs right to the edge where that shoulder obviously connects. It does cause, cause some problems when it comes to this figure, I mean, you're going to have some issues where the arms aren't going to hinge that far out. Um, but they do rotate all the way around. There's one thing I want to certainly also mention as well. But like I said, they only hinge out at about a 45 degree angle. He does have a bend at the elbow. He does actually have a double bend in the elbow. And then his hands rotate and hinge back and forth. The one talking point I wanted to mention is the string. Now, the string has come loose uh, one time, actually, before. It comes off right the section there. I thought I had gone in and very carefully uh, stitched together, uh, put together what I thought was a strong enough knot. As you can see, it's come loose yet again. I'm just going to feed that back through. It involved me actually having to pop the torso off. 
very carefully feed the string through and then tie off what I thought was a strong enough knot, but it seems like it's come loose again. I guess what you could always do too is take a little dab of glue, but I would probably want to go the route more so of tying that off in a knot before I go the route of glue. But that, that's one thing you want to be careful of because it is string. You want to make sure that that, like I said, when you are moving things, when you are turning things, that you be very, very careful. As I said, that's already come off once. I'll probably have to go in there and uh, fix it up again before I finally get this guy on display. Then for his legs, we'll bring up his skirt. The legs split out at about there. He do does have a top swivel cut on the thigh, so basically you can, sw you can swivel the thigh back and forth. He does have a single bend on the knee. These are things, of course, you're not going to see on the movie Pinhead. I don't think Doug Bradley is going to be showing you that anytime soon. You can swivel that back and forth, and then he does have toe articulation. It hinges up and down, and you can also rock it back and forth. There's a lot to love about this figure. The biggest issue, well, not the biggest issue, but certainly something you want to be careful of is the string. As you can see, the string literally loops its way through that open section of his stomach. I thought I had already fixed it before I hit the record button, but I'll have to again go in there and do my best to tie that knot back off. Other than that, though, I'm really, really happy with how this guy turned out. Does it mean that we may potentially get ourselves... Let me just fix that last pin going there, right? There we go. Does it mean certainly we'll be getting ourselves some more Cenobites? That's not up to me to decide. It certainly is up to the folks over at NECA Toys. But boy, oh boy, what a neat looking figure. The fact that... I'm just going to get him to stand completely straight up. There we go. The fact that we went from this... And the fact that we went from this... And we eventually got ourselves this is a testament to the fact that NECA toys listen to their fans. Fans for the longest time have been saying, are we ever going to get ourselves Michael Myers? And for the longest time, NECA toys have said, we're working on it or no plans as of yet. The same similar collectors have also always said, are we ever going to be getting ourselves a pinhead? And even though NECA has always sort of been silent to the idea of when they're going to be releasing new figures, keep in mind that they know behind the scenes, they're working away at it, they're working away at it, they know exactly what fans like myself want to have in our collection. And obviously they probably have been looking to give us an ultimate pinhead for the longest of time. So even when NECA toys do say, we're working on it, or no plans as of yet. You got to believe behind the scenes, they're planning some pretty impressive releases like the Ultimate Pinhead. It's the fact, again, that we've gone from this to this. You can really see how the amount of time that has passed has allowed them to perfect figures that I already thought back in the day were already cool. NECA delivers a devilishly good upgrade to Pinhead, much better if you ask me than before. The other figures had their charm, of course. I've reviewed all three of them, all three waves of them. And they're still figures I have in my collection. I'm probably not likely going to be parting ways with them anytime soon. After all, we did get ourselves an ultimate pinhead. But let's not jump the gun yet to sell off our collection with the hope that all those Cenobites are going to be getting ultimate releases. Maybe if the line does well, or at least the selling of pinhead does well, I would imagine maybe NECA's got lined up Chatterer and probably Butterball and probably the female Cenobite from like the first two. I don't think plans beyond that are even something that's coming to their mind just yet. So don't get rid of Chatterbeast. Don't get rid of Barbie. Don't get rid of the Wire Twins or certainly Angelique. I think the likelihood of us getting ultimate versions of any one of those are probably slim to none right now, but you never know. NECA could have a lot of stuff up their hellish sleeve. With all the pleasure that comes with the figure, there certainly is some pain. And the only pain that comes with this release of Pinhead is those strings that are attached to either side of his upper torso. Because they feed their way through his stomach hole, if you move the torso too much on one side or the other, you could run the risk of drawing tight that string and it freeing itself from the hole on either side. Luckily, I was able to feed the string back through. A little tip of the trade, by the way, if you do have a, a same similar issue with your figure, just feed the string underneath the hole and run a screwdriver straight through, small enough, of course, to fit through the hole, and you should be able to retrieve the string. Ultimately, I just took a little bit of cautionary measures in place, and I did end up adding a little bit of glue just on either side, just a small dollop of glue. You can, can't even really see it, but it's enough to keep those knots in bay, and those strings aren't going to be going anywhere. Just be a little bit careful of that. 
Other than that, though, a really fantastic release, Pinhead. You get two alternate heads. Both, both are so good in design. The fact that they are so simple to remove also from the socket section that they didn't use a big bulbous ball joint. NECA toys are more than well aware that collectors are more likely to be swapping the heads out on this particular piece than all others. And because they do have the little pins all spread across his face, there's so many of them. Of course, they want to be able to have the head be as removable as easy as possible. And I think they pulled that off with such a very small, slender post. One of the smallest I've seen on these figures. Pinhead is definitely one to worth, worth picking up. As I said, though, I probably wouldn't be jumping the gun to sell off your Hellraiser collection from Hellraiser, from NECA toys from before. Because, again, the likelihood of getting newer releases of some of those Cenobites, I don't see it personally happening, happening but I could possibly be wrong as well. Still, I think I'm going to be holding on to Chatterbeast. I don't think we're going to be getting ourselves an ultimate version of Chatterbeast, which by the way, is from my all-time favorite, Hellraiser, Hellraiser 4 Bloodlines. What's your favorite Hellraiser film? Let me know down below in the comments section. I'm wondering how many people are actually going to say Inferno. Inferno was terrible. Actually, all of the ones after Bloodlines, for the most part, were pretty terrible. Hellseeker was, eh, was okay. Inferno was pretty bad. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of uh, the Hellraiser Pinhead, the ultimate version of Pinhead, now released from NECA Toys. Also, I'd like to send out a big thank you to folks over at NECA who are nice enough to send this sample my way. If you guys are new to this channel and maybe haven't yet had the chance to do so, hit that subscribe button down below, don't you think? So that when future videos are coming onto this channel, it's good. I know there's going to be a whole lot of uh, NECA stuff lined up. You don't have to sell your soul either. Just stay tuned to this channel. Don't sell your soul. Whatever you do. Don't pick up puzzle boxes either. That's a big no-no. Lots of stuff coming your way though, members of the mob, so keep your peepers peeled. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.